Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, uh, we're discussing what's it like after you put out a series like the Lost Years series? What, it, what has our experience been like since sharing everything we've shared? And now fielding uh, a lot of responses um, and including a lot of questions because that's what we ask you guys to do is tell us, use hashtag your biscuits, let us know how you're uh, processing it and and if you have any questions for us. Um, and so we knew we were going to do what we were th- calling a follow-up episode and this is it. At least this is well, one of them. I, yeah, I would say this is one of them. Yeah, let's just say it's one of and them. And we may get to some questions, uh, but I think uh, one of the conversations we've been having is as we've processed how we're, we're how we're processing the the reaction, uh, it kind of just led to the decision to take today's episode in a slightly different direction. But I'm not saying it won't end up in a, a place of answering questions. But we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, one quick thing we do want to cover um, is if you're listening to this, you might know that the podcast comes out every Monday in audio form, but through the power of video. We are also recording every single episode with a video camera, have been for quite some time. And then the following Sunday, so a little bit less than a week after the podcast comes out, the video version comes out at youtube.com slash earbiscuits. So if you wanna see us talk and not just hear us talk, if if you're like listening and you're like, man, they're referring to a photo or Man, I don't know exactly how to take what he's saying. Maybe the look on his face would help me understand it. Oh, he was actually smiling when he said that. Right. Or yeah, he was crying at that point. Well, and some if you people... want to see us smile and cry, then uh, go to the Ear Biscuits channel on YouTube. And I also made reference to uh, my hair during my episode, uh, where I told my story, and then. But you're done with that. Regretfully, I watched a little bit of that and I was like, well. That was an interesting decision. I'm not saying I'm not gonna do it again. But but we're not gonna talk about it now. No, we're not gonna talk about it now. Because it's not the thing that we I'm not even about. gonna tell you what my hair looks like today because you'll have to watch it on YouTube <laughs> to uh, figure that out. That's not why they're here, man. No, no uh, well, it's at least, at least 0.4% of the listening audience is here for my hair. But that means that 99.6% are here for other things. Like maybe my your hat, hair. My hat and my jacket. <laughs> you wanna get a load of my hat wow. and my jacket? Link has on a hat Listen, and a jacket. So do you. Can you, you can almost see it. How do you wanna, how, how do you wanna get into this? Because I, I do think it's, you know, the, the brief conversation we had last night. Uh, I called you in a panic. You called me in a panic. <laughs> no, you didn't call me in a panic, but you were like, hey, we, you know, we should talk about how we're gonna approach this thing because I, I, th- I think that's, as, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. good a place to start because we were each individually pulling um, questions and comments that we wanted to address or respond to. At least that was our plan. Yeah. Um, well, it, and I and it turns out independently we were we were having our own um, our own struggles with how how we wanted to have this discussion today. Right. So when I called you last night, I. I just gotten out of therapy. Just busting out the barn doors. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I don't know if, if your experience, if those of you who, who go to therapy, for, I mean for me, I, I always go in thinking, why am I doing this? Like, you know, I got nothing to say. I got nothing to talk about. What am I gonna do? Just make stuff. Like I all, I, I always lull myself back into this place where mm-hmm. I kind of just feel like it's unnecessary, and then by the end of it, I'm like, this is why I go to therapy. Well, this, as a side note, this brings up something very pertinent that I'm I'm not going to talk about right now, but I will talk about later in this episode. Continue. Oh well, well that was a tease, <laughs> and um, I um. The, the, so the first thing I, st- I started talking about was, you know, Jesse and I had had like a, uh, basically a fight about 
you know, we're redo. Of course, we're redoing the pool area, and so this is you know typical cliche married couple construction project arguments okay. situation. And uh, but I kind of had this sense that there was something going on beneath my concern about the construction project that was fueling the intensity with which I was arguing about this and okay. standing up for things like, you know, where grills will be and or where grill will be. I don't, I'm not like you, I'm only gonna have one grill. Hey, I'm not doing yeah. two grills. You're already losing. Uh, but it's one, it's a, oh, it's a nice grill. It's like, wait. It might be one grill better than both of your grills put you, together. Well, that, that's, I at least that's what I'm going you for. You are waving the white flag <laughs> at the design phase and I'm all for it. Um, so I, um, I was like, you know, I, I, I've been feeling like kind of tired and sort of worn out and it isn't like, we're not, Working hard. Well, I was gonna <laughs> say, we're not working as hard as it can get for us. Like there's yeah, no, we're yeah, not touring. Definitely. We don't have a major project besides our ongoing things that we're doing, but I'm like, and just usually I would be like, have a lot of energy, but I'm like, I just feel like a little bit beat down and I started trying to process that. And that was when I started realizing that this, the process of the our stories going out there and then them sort of people interacting with them, interacting with the stories, interacting with us, it's been a very emotionally draining thing. Now, I wanna, I wanna clarify that, you know, it's also been awesome. Just because it's been emotionally draining doesn't mean that it hasn't been great. I mean, the amount of encouragement that we've received from people on both ends of the spectrum, it, regardless of whether or not they, you know, people who started not being a Christian then became a Christian, people who were a Christian, who aren't a Christian, people still are Christian. It, 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 no matter what your point of reference is for the story, we've received so much encouragement and just kind messages and thoughtful comments. Mm -hmm. And that's been great, hearing people's stories, Um. But for me, the thing that I realized I was kind of focusing on, and this is not too surprising, was the small the small percentage of people who I kind of felt disapproved by. Disapproved, uh, disapproved by. of. Okay. By, by them. And you know, to kind of, I, I don't wanna, like I'm not gonna talk. talking go, critical responses? Yeah, just, well. People who, I mean, there's there's some responses that are just not critical and not thoughtful, and those are those are really easy to just be like, okay, I'm not going to let that affect me. But there are some that are critical and thoughtful, and my, the way my personality interacts with that is, I just have this like, I, I get immediately defensive, right? And so what I want to do is I wanna come on the show and I wanna go through the questions and the critiques and I wanna enter into some sort of like defense of my position. I wanna justify the conclusions that I've come to, right? But maybe beyond that, it, it wasn't, there was also people who kinda did like a takedown essentially of like my story or whatever. And my story was kinda easier to do a takedown of because I kind of presented like these, this very specific process that I went through from an intellectual standpoint. So people can kind of key in on things and be like, well, here's the thing I take issue with here and here's the thing I take issue with here. And then there were people interacting with the people who had those kind of critical responses who didn't know who I was, didn't know who you were, didn't listen to the podcast, but immediately were interpreting me through the lens of this person who's being critical and and, and I felt, and I'm not, this isn't one person, this, there, there's, a few, there's a number of people who have done this. And I felt super defensive because I felt like I was being misrepresented, right? And so I just realized that, mm -hmm. and I didn't even understand that I was dealing with this until I started talking it out. Mm -hmm. And just this idea of wanting to be like, well, this is what you, I didn't say that, or you just said this about me, or you assumed this about my process, or you're being critical of me and the way that I thought about this, or the resource that I suggested, and I have all these answers that I wanna get into. Mm -hmm. But then I very quickly just started realizing that um, 
I just don't want this podcast to devolve into like a defense of the position that we have, you know, the conclusions that we have come to for a number of reasons. Number one, I, I'm I'm most curious about what the if you're going to number them, what the what are your personal reasons? Because I know, I yeah, I agree that one of the reasons is that it's not that's not what that's not what this podcast is. Yeah, right. Um. Well, I was just I was going to say yes. This is not it's not what the podcast is. It's like this isn't some defense of any. You know, this isn't a this isn't a, a place to come on and defend and conjecture because that's not what everybody's here for. But also that we're not, we're not qualified to do that. You know, I, I'm I am not an expert in any of the stuff that I talked about. I'm just an interested layperson who was who had their faith basically turned over by just looking into some of these things. But I'm mm -hmm. not then qualified to then tell you what you should think about it. I'm all because when I start thinking about my process, like it wasn't it wasn't easy to to revisit a lot of those things because sometimes you're like, well, in the past I was very interested in this particular thing and I looked it up and I was convinced of something. But if you ask me why were you convinced? I can't immediately recall why I was convinced. A lot of times you'll become convinced of something, yeah. but the specific reasons you were convinced, you're like, well, I gotta go kind of read that resource again to get back to that place because that's just the way the human mind works, right? Doesn't mean that I didn't come to a conclusion and didn't move to something else, but anyway, the idea of getting into this like tit for tat, defending a position, it just felt like it would be very unhealthy for me personally, but it also felt like I was just very quickly just kind of moving into this place that it was about me and it was about my ego, which is a which is a consistent problem for me, right? I mean, I talked a little bit about being a three on the Enneagram and one of the weaknesses of the three in, in being an achiever and a performer is you want everyone everyone's approval. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the idea of throwing something out there, throwing a bomb out there like we did and being like this sacred thing that is the most important thing in so many people's lives and was the most important thing in our life, we've discarded it for the most part. Uh, that is going to, that's throwing a rock into a hornet's nest and, the, and some of the hornets will come out and sting you. Um, yeah, and I just realized that I'm just not, I wasn't, de I'm not, haven't been dealing with that in a healthy way because my response to that has been, well, uh, let me tell you why I am justified. Let me prove to you why I was right about this this thing. And it's like, no, A, that wouldn't be effective. It's not like that's gonna change anybody's mind. Mm -hmm. But B, that wouldn't be good for me. Yeah, and I think that as we've talked about on this podcast and like I like I just said, this is not, that's not how we've built this thing. This podcast, and I, I was really glad when you called that to hear you say that because uh, I didn't know I didn't know why when I was looking back at the questions that I was, um, I was kind of stuck or kind of troubled by it. But that that helped make sense of it. That yeah, this this podcast is a conversation between us sharing our experiences and um, our perspectives on things with each other. And I think if how, whatever, how, whatever people wanna take from that as a listener is they're free to do that. But if we start turning towards the microphones and the cameras and we start saying, you know, and it, a, a little bit of that made sense. It's like, hey, these are the resources. If you're interested in some of the things that either one of us talked about, you know, these are the books you can read if you're interested in that, if you're into it. But I'm, you're not going to sit here and go through all of these arguments about, okay, now let's do a podcast dedicated to Jesus and all, all, all of the takeaways from our research about that and the conversations we've had. And let's start doing something that's like that's challenging or that has an agenda or or puts out a specific perspective that then 
we're hoping to change people's minds. I think it's more of, I mean, even when we would, in previous episodes when we would just give relational advice or life advice and half the time it would just be for the fun of it. Yeah. We would often say, listen, we're not experts at this. We're just sharing our lives and our perspectives. Take it, take it with caution and sometimes with grain of salt. I mean, we're just people. You know, that's not, we're, pe- we're friends having a conversation that um, we're, we welcome you to be a part of it. Um, but we don't wanna be prescriptive and we don't wanna start arguing on a soapbox about anything. Um, so yeah, it started to feel like it was, the temptation was there to be very defensive uh, with with some of the questions. And yeah, because of the nature of your story, it, it generated a lot more of those questions that weren't personal in nature, but they were intellectual in nature or they were philosophical or just belief oriented. They were they were separate from you as a person and <clears throat> it does invite those kind of conversations. And I think having starting to address those now would just perpetuate that and that's not what that's not what we're after. Yeah. For me, um I think that I felt a lot more I mean you you felt you, you talked about how you felt relief and how there was a lot of positive ripple effects from this podcast too and you you know you can talk more about that but I would say I mean that's predominantly what I what I've experienced um definitely the relief of of getting it out there and I knew it, but I didn't fully appreciate how sharing so much of our conversations at this desk, at this table, but not sharing that had kind of really eaten away at me. It, it really made me uncomfortable mm-hmm. um, to seem like I was being real, but then I wasn't being, it wasn't like a full disclosure. So I. I, I think I have experienced some lightness associated with getting that out there. Um, and I, and you know, like you said, I, I definitely did as well. It wasn't until I started thinking about the, this follow up, which we were like, yeah, ask us yeah, questions, yeah. make comments, and right. we'll respond to them. And then I just started finding myself kind of keying in on the critical ones or the, que- the the gotcha questions. People asking a question because they think that by me trying to answer it, they're gonna, they're gonna get me, they're gonna catch me in, in, in some illogical thought process, you know? Right, whereas, and, whereas with my story, it, it was so, it, you know, it was told in a way that like, if, if, if people were critical of me, they, they would have been critical, it would have, it, it could have been Taken as a personal attack of a of a personal experience, not just some external assessment of of a belief about something. Well, and that's a, and and I think that that's a thing that is that's difficult for me is that even though I kind of told a story which was like these are the things that I read or learned that then made me question what I had always known. Some people interacted with the points, right? Some people might be like, I think your conclusion here was incorrect, or I think, you know, I think you've given too much credence to these critical thinkers, you know, people who are critical of the Bible versus people who believe it, whatever. Um, but the majority of people find some sort of th- fault with with me, right? Well, you you know, it was something in your process, something in your pride, something in the way that you see things. You ultimately want it out, you just didn't know it. Like trying to find some way to explain it based on some deficiency in me, right? Now first of all, you may be right about that, but that's kind of beside the point. What I'm talking about right now is it's difficult to not take it personally even though it's it's difficult for people to not make it personal 
And I'm not saying oh, like, oh. Well, it was, and it was your personal process. I think yeah, the yeah, things yeah. that you said can be separated from you, but for you they weren't. Yeah, well and I wanna be clear, I'm not, I'm not complaining about this. Like I expected, I actually expected it to be much worse than it was. The, like I said, the vast majority of people, whether they're Christians or not, have been gr very gracious. I think the, the thing that I was reminded of is just how big a part my ego plays in anything that I talk about, right? It's just like, I'm obviously, I, I was trying to be as honest as I can when I t tell my story, but I also kinda want to be the hero of my own story, don't we all? And in telling the story, I. I'm also telling it in a way that justifies my decisions and my conclusions. Um, and there's really no other way to live life in one sense, but that can be also done in a very unhealthy way. And I and we're gonna take a break here in a second, but I I want to talk about how that tendency to basically find personal fault with someone who's deconstructing is something that we relate to really personally as well uh, by telling a little story. But before that, there's a bunch of leashes. We're gonna sell leashes. We got uh, leashes, <laughs> collars. If you got a pet, go to mythical.com, look at the stuff that you can get for your pet. Well, look at the pattern on that, Link. I don't think we've ever had the privilege of doing this. Look at that. But the pattern that is behind us is the pattern that has made its way onto this actual leash. Yeah, put ear biscuits on your dog or any other type of animal that needs to be leashed. There's also a collar, a big one, and a smaller one, which Jade is currently wearing. She's at the groomer, or she'd be in here right now. Mythical.com, rep your pets. Rep your boys on your pets. Um, I, 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 in terms of my experience, I would say, I mean, I, I shared my story for me. I shared, um, you know, when I when I reach the conclusion that it's like, I want to be hopeful, I want to do the work to remain engaged in a faith journey and not just to be, not just sit on my laurels and go on with my day-to-day -day life and um, there's so much that I could get distracted by that I would just never get back to it. Um, I actually feel like sharing my story was a big, this was a big part of my journey because it just helped me process things for myself and I, I would say kind of jumpstart or kind of reinvigorate my own, my own process because for a number of years it had, I just kind of put it on a shelf, you know, it's like I just, I'm kind of stuck and I don't, feel, you know, but then the thing that I started to realize as I prepped it and then as I shared it started to come out and even afterward as I've talked to people about it, I've really benefited from understanding myself even more. And I can get into, I'd like to get into some of those details but at the same time at a parallel path, the fact that again secondarily, it was something that resonated either your story or my story or both of them resonated with so many people that we didn't ask people, I don't know, maybe we, we I, think, I don't think we asked for people to share their stories, I think we, we acknowledged that it was happening along the way but I didn't anticipate that a lot of people would just use it as an opportunity to start to share their own stories to the extent that they have and share how um, they've related to, to different aspects of what we had to say. And I was just, you know, I would just, I didn't know how to, I would just heart a lot of these things because there were so many and I just, I wanted to reply and say something but practically it just wasn't really possible. But I just wanted to say that my experience was just being blown away with how our stories were helpful because when you when you hear somebody share something and there were people saying I just I don't feel alone now that you've shared and again not just me we were responding to you sometimes me sometimes but it just means 
it it means so much that people are were moved were moved by it to uh, to not feel alone, to be moved to share their own stories, and to just to start that conversation with their friends on the internet and off the internet. It was, I was like, wow, I actually think that it's helped people. <laughs> and I really didn't know that that would happen. I, I don't, maybe it seems obvious in this internet culture of sharing that's like, yeah, when you share and when you take a risk, it helps people, but I never associated that with what we were considering doing. And so I just remember being in my bed one night and I was just looking through all the stories and I was just overwhelmed with gratitude that that it did make a difference. And I again, that's, I didn't know that was gonna happen. That was not, I, I don't think I would have said, I'm doing this to help people. I think, you know, I was doing it as, because I thought I, I felt ready to do it, and I felt like it was part of my process. Um. So I would, I guess, I was su- surprised, maybe more than y- you would have thought I would have been. <laughs> well, I want to. I mean, I want to talk about how I interacted with all that, and like what, how that, while it was helpful, it also increase my anxiety. I wanna get to that because I think there's a whole conversation to have there. But I don't wanna skip over our uh, the, the interactions that we've had with our, our old friend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, so there's a, I mean. We, there, talked, we there, talked about him a little bit in one of, one of our stories, maybe your story. I can't remember, but there's, yeah, there's been a number of people that we've reconnected with, but um, when we mentioned him, we were talking about how we were on the other. We, you know, we were still. We were we were on the front side of it, and he was kind of going through the process that we're that yeah. Well, we've been going to, to, that we've described to recap. So uh, this is a very close friend of ours growing up who was uh, a fellow very strong Christian uh, who in the early two thousands basically started to have somewhat of a deconstruction. And we reconnected with him. We, we, well, first of all, since our deconstruction, we've connected with him and we're, we're, we kind of, we know where we're each other are at. But we told him, hey, you know, we're sharing our stories publicly. We'd love for you to listen or whatever. So we've been kind of talking with him since then. He was able to uncover some of our old correspondence when Link and I were getting ready to go into the ministry to work with Campus Crusade to do evangelism training. Uh, And we were running some things by him as someone who was in in a different place. But then what he was doing after we spent some time with him, he was going back and like writing in his journal about the interactions that he was having with us. And in reading so many of the responses to the to our story, especially the responses from his res- oh, you're talking about public responses. Yeah, yeah. So reading public responses to our stories, and specifically responses from people who are, uh, you know, basically their only response to what we said is, "This is just very sad." There's no like, it's basically just like, I- "I'm praying for you guys. This is very sad." I hope you find the faith, those kinds of responses. It was very, very reminiscent of the way that we interacted with him. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me how much where we were at in life and what we were doing was informing our responses. Because we were literally raising support to go on staff full time. Uh, and I had probably, you were in the very middle of it, I was coming to the end, this g- giant sort of left turn in your life where you've thrown, uh, you, you've left your previous job and you're you're putting it all on the line for Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then you go and you talk to a friend who you really respect and we probably, we had the deepest sort of intellectual conversations about our faith, even in high school with this guy, like this, you know, we we talked about things 
on as deep of, of a level as we could <laughs> at the time. And uh, in high school, I remember those conversations starting. And so it was just always kind of had this sort of philosophical thing going with him. And then for him to have these really deep questions that were kind of tearing at the roots of our faith, I remember me and you talking to him and then talking to each other and it was just like, I think the way you described it in a text to him the other day was like, we just had, there was zero openness to yeah. what you were going through. There was, there, was a, in it, there was a complete inability to turn the questions that you were asking yourself onto ourselves because there was way too much at stake at the time. Yeah. What are we gonna suddenly stop raising support and tell everybody that who just gave us all this money that, oh, by the way guys, I'm really questioning the foundations of this whole thing. It's like, I'm not gonna go there, so I'm not even gonna allow that thought to enter my mind. Yeah, so I, in my recollection was we were, you know, we were as polite as we could to be in trying to help, help him turn a, a corner, to, to, to double back. And that was it, yeah. you know, it was like, cause that's what we had, that's, that's what we were supposed to do. You know, so it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, an actual conversation. And he, you know, he felt he, that, and he knew that. He, he was also gracious because in his journal entry, he basically said, I completely get where these guys are coming from because it's where I came from. And that's why, and so. And, and, yeah, I think he said that he did to others what we were doing to him. And so all that to <laughs> say that um, any sort of dismissive comments that we're getting about our story, which again is a very small minority, um, it's more than justified. We deserve every bit of it uh, because we've done it. We've been there and it's that, and I remember thinking about him and thinking about, I was like, where did you go wrong? You know, like, I think he hung out with the wrong people. I, I you know, I, I was trying to figure out, I was trying to get to the bottom of why he, someone who had a very real, strong, informed faith, was suddenly questioning it and I was just like, what did he, where did he screw up? Let me find that. Let me find where he screwed up. I never could figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I just, I, I just wanted to acknowledge that, that we, we've done that and we've been there. Yeah, so it's, you know, I think there are people who are coming to our defense because when they see people say, it makes me sad. And I, you know, and I, you know, I, I saw someone make the point, it's like, I don't think people realize when they say that it makes them sad when someone else shares their personal story that that's manipulative. But I, I, I get it. I understand why it, it, it makes, if you have a certain, Worldview, it made me sad before. Yeah, for I, other people. 100%. So, uh, but know, I, but it, I do think it's helpful. I think it's helpful. And I listen. I'm not saying this, but I think this could be. This could help those of you who have said this is sad, to understand why it's not. It's it's difficult to not take that as an insult, because if I were to say, you know, it's sad that you that you've based your life on something that's not true. That's that's offensive. That's an insult, right? To say that to you. If it, I'm not saying that's what I'm I'm not saying that. But if I were to say that, that would be offensive. It would be insulting. It would be dismissive. And so I think the same thing is it's sad that you guys are moving away from this thing that I know to be true. And it's sad that your eternal destiny is in question all this. I understand where you're coming from and according to your world view, this is pretty much the only response that you could have, right? but to communicate it in that way and not understand why that's insulting and dismissive and people are gonna perceive it in that way, hopefully I've sh shown a little bit of light on that. I think another thing that we didn't anticipate was um, that people, not that people were gonna come out of the woodwork in order to text or email or try to Facebook message us even though we're not on Facebook anymore, uh, about things is, well, it's, it's not that that surprises, but that they would then r r reach out to, you know, 
our wives or our extended families. And so, so th- that was something that I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it would have changed how or if we would have done it, but it's not something that we specifically anticipated. Um, you know, it's like, I mean, Christy would get a bunch of messages from people she hadn't heard from in a while, and I know they come from a place of really caring, but it's like, then all this, now she's got to field questions from people that are like, it, it was basically like, are you okay? Are you guys okay? Right. And I was like, Christy, you know, the thing that I'm realizing is that it was, it was two years, when, when I tell the story of us in the minivan, like in tears, not going into church and trying to figure out where we were and um, where we each were and all those type of things and the anguish from that particular story I told, well that was two years ago. You know, it's like we're, we've, we're in a different place than that. We're not sitting, we don't have the minivan anymore. And we're, even if we did, we're not sitting in it weeping every Sunday. You know, we're in a, we're, we're in a much healthier, uh, I, healthy's not the right word, but like we're in a good place. And I don't, you know, and, and people, when you share this story and if the last time they talked to you was three, four, five, six, seven years ago, it's like, well, they don't, they don't know when that was. So it's like, did this just happen? You know? And really the first thing Christy learned was the first question she would ask in response to the people that she would engage with was, well, have you, have you actually listened to the podcast? Because a lot of people, they would hear from someone and they would have concern, but they wouldn't have listened to it themselves. And so that's an important point. Cause like, I'm not gonna engage if you don't really know all the details already. I can't, I can't sit here and retell you all of this yes. uh, in face, on Facebook. Um, so even from a purely practical standpoint, it's kinda like there's, there's a handful or maybe more than a handful of like, oh, we gotta, I find myself in a conversation with someone and it's like, they're bringing some assumptions to the table that like we're in we're in trouble. Yeah, and that's not the case. Um, yeah, I didn't anticipate. Um, I mean, if I, I should have thought about it, but I was thinking about a lot of things leading <laughs> up to us talking, and uh, I did not anticipate, given the nature of a small town and a community of people who at least in the circles that my family runs in back home. It's like, you know, we're, we're talking about a, Christ, a, a Christian circle of people. Yeah. A very well-connected group of people, uh, both my family and Jesse's family. So it's like the amount of people who have kind of come up to them saying things, making assumptions, again, having not listened to the podcast in many cases. Yeah, I feel like I could have prepared them better. I feel bad about that. I think that's been that's been a source of some anxiety for me as well, uh, as I, as I've thought about this because you know they knew that we were going to talk about it to some degree, uh, some more than they're others. back there on kind of the front lines. It's like we've been dealing you know? with a lot of the online nobody, stuff. Nobody nobody comes nobody up to us on LA. the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but they'll see somebody not, at the you're grocery not sitting store. at a restaurant or in yeah. the grocery store, and somebody's going to come up to you. You know, um, yeah, so. I guess we could have done we could have done better, yeah. On that front, but I, I wanted I I wanted to talk about what you were saying um, with the number of the way that I interacted with the number of like stories that people were telling mm-hmm. and, and the number of people who related. Now, my initial reaction was one of this is awesome, this is super encouraging. Uh, like you said, it was a very. It, it, there was a few times where I was just reading people's stories. It was very. It was a very emotionally. It yeah. was a very emotional thing. It's like people have been through some shit, man. Yeah. Um, in contrast to to our stories, like I like I said, it was very difficult to kind of move out of that world. But uh, that world, we benefited personally in, from that world in a lot of ways that other people have a lot more trauma. Mm-hmm. Depending on their their background, and some of those stories are just heart wrenching. But the way that 
again, so there's there's just sort of my heart reaction to it, which is this is great, and then there's my head reaction to it, which is like, what are we gonna do with this? You know, I'm always thinking about what the next thing is that we're gonna do, and uh, yeah, and I, I thought about that too. When when, when you got all these people sharing the story and there feels like there's this momentum and there feels like there is this, you know, we've all kind of left something that was very organized and was a very particular movement into this thing that it's just pretty nebulous. What is this life after Christian faith? Yeah, are you talking about thoughts that enter your mind like, well, should we organize something? <laughs> no, 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 no. So I, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I'm, I'm too, I'm too old, and just wise enough to know that that would be a horrible idea. <laughs> I'm not talking about a rent link church. No, no, I'm talking let's, about like a no, specific like. Oh, let's change the complexion of this podcast to to have some programmatic uh, addressing of some of these things. I, w- like, I would say, in a more general sense, it's just asking the question of. Is there a project associated with this, right? Mm-hmm. That's one question that enters my mind. Is like, is there a project? I don't know what that is, but you got all these people, they've got their stories, there's this momentum, we've tapped into something. And so I feel this pressure to sort of figure that out. At the same time, I'm feeling this pressure to, like you said, this has sort of been a kick in the pants to like sort of re-engage spiritually. Um, for me, that's been true, but it's also kind of the way that it's registered with me is I, I threw out this deconstruction story and talked about what I, what I don't believe anymore. I talked a little bit about what I do believe now, but what I do believe now is held with a much lower level of conviction and passion Mm -hmm. uh, because it's more of a position of openness and curiosity, but that I don't wanna be in that position perpetually and never embrace anything, right? But there was this sort of like, well people, like you just, again, you just threw this rock into the hornet's nest and now you, you got all these hornets flying around and some of them are coming up to you and asking, well what now? You know, mm-hmm. and and I'm not trying to put on the mantle of some spiritual leader. That's the last thing that I want to do because that's not. It, it's very much the last thing that I ever want to do. But there is this part of me that's just like, well, you should find some answers. You know, you should find some answers, and then you should relay those answers. And mm-hmm. again, I just feel like that is rooted in my ego. I don't think that that's rooted in anything good. I don't think that there's. I think it's very much about a personal personal interest and personal self-justification. I, do, I don't think that there's any, I should be leaning into that. Um, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't be personally go, you know, seeking and being open and being open to whatever is next for me, which I think that I am, but Doing that because I want to then present myself to a group of people who are right. listening is a right. And, and the interesting thing it's a trap. is, ironically, that's what ministry is for so many people. That's what any position of leadership is. But I've known a, I've got a lot of friends who are pastors, and I've had a lot of friends who are pastors, and some of them in their most honest moments have relayed to me that there is this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy, I don't know, that's probably not the right terminology, but there is this idea that now I am the one that you are coming to for answers, and so I must create the answers. I must have the answers. I must live the life. I must have the appearance of having it figured out because that is what you expect of me. And I think that a lot of pastors are just kind of stuck in this. It's tough hamster wheel of appearances and kind of, and well, the church in a lot of ways has set it up that you can't you can't screw up. 
You can't, you can't be a human. You, you, you can't have imperfections, especially if you're in leadership, especially if you're the pastor. Right. Yeah, I feel, I, I feel for him. And, but I'll, I'll draw an, an analogous scenario for us. Um, I was on my Valentine's date with Christy and first of all, I, there's a story that I'm not gonna tell now. Maybe I'll tell it next week when it's like, when we have more space for this. So don't let me forget, I guess this funny thing that happened. But I, that's kind of my point. I was in a dinner and another another weird thing happened that I'm not referring to. <laughs> and I made a joke to Christy at dinner and I was like, oh, you, you know I'm gonna talk about this on Ear Biscuits. And it was like, I, and she, you know, she got, she was like, uh-uh, are you serious? It's like, and it wasn't that she didn't want me to share a funny story, it's just that we're on a date. This is about me and her, and if I'm sitting there, the moment something happens, I'm like, oh yeah, I got an ear biscuit story, then that robs the the intimacy of the moment, you know? It's like, well, we just had a funny moment, you know? We didn't, we experienced a funny moment that you can then have with an audience later, you know? It's like, um, and I was like, actually, I was just joking because I kn that was my joke, Christy. Well, that was my defense. <laughs> and it, I, it's just a joke, but I, no. I am talking about it on your business <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, I'm talking about talking about talking it. about it, but I'm not talking about it. Okay. But maybe next week I'll I'll share another story, but not this one because I'm it's off limits now. Yeah, because that's sacred, precious. Um, just between you and Christy. But my point, I hear your point when it comes to like, am I going to pursue? Am I gonna, tr like, let's just say it's find an answer to a, to a specific spiritual or philosophical question for yourself. Are you gonna find that question so you just so you can turn around and prove that you have an answer on ear biscuits? Like that's dangerous. That is a trap. You and, know, it's and like, it's, it's a trap for certain personalities. My personality, listen, it's a trap for me, and it's. It's one of the ways that I interacted with responsibilities in the church, right? It's like, oh yeah, of course I'm gonna lead a Bible study, right? And of course, every once in a while, if they ask me, I'll preach, give a talk on something. Hmm. Um, and I think there's a, ironically, <laughs> um, the way, and of course, our experience is with the evangelical church, but the way the evangelical church is structured at this point is, um, typically men who are type A personalities who would otherwise make great CEOs make really good pastors in the system that is currently set up. Uh, and they're charismatic leaders, not charismatic in the theological sense, but just winning personalities. They're smart, they're insightful, they know how to relate, they know how to tell a good story. And they very quickly find hundreds, if not thousands of people who want in and I think it just creates a really unhealthy, For I know for me personally, if we had a state in ministry, I'm sure that that's, we would have taken some sort of path in leadership mm -hmm. and um, I think I operated in a really unhealthy place for a really long time. I know I did, I described it, you yeah. know, as a, like a, as a worship leader. Yeah. Well, but the interesting thing is that to get back to the what we're gonna do with this momentum or whatever it is, and this is kind of what I was talking about in therapy last night, is finding a way to just lean into the personal nature of the process, but it not being about a movement, it not being about, um, being right, being justified, being the Bible answer man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And having an answer and having a reason for everything. Because very quickly, almost immediately, that just becomes about me. It just becomes about me wanting to justify myself and to get your approval. Uh, and in my the whole process that I've been going through in therapy is leaning is leaning away from that and being like it's not no 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 it's not about people's approval it's it's not about what people think about you it's about 
figuring out what is actually happening in your heart. Um, and so I think, so my desire for when we talk about these things on the podcast is just it to, I'm not saying we shouldn't answer a question or two at some point, even now, I don't know, probably not now, we're almost out of time, but I want the tone of that and the purpose of that to be, hey, I'm not an expert, just a couple of guys trying to figure out life, trying to move closer to the truth, doing our best. Yeah, for me, I like I said, the the, the process of sharing my story really helped me almost internalize some conclusions about like realizing things about who I was and about how I interact, like the way that I interacted with my faith and my belief system and what that what that meant about me as a person then, what it means for me now. Um, and well, there there's one tweet from Holly that I wanted to read. She said, I too was raised evangelical and am an Enneagram one like me. I struggled my whole life trying to be a quote, better Christian. And it wasn't until after college that I realized I was exhausted from living with this internal struggle. And that is, this process of putting this out there has really helped me begin to understand to a new level my own internal struggle. And that there is absolutely a level of exhaustion that I did not know that was there associated with my perfectionism, my underlying anxiety. Um, and again, it's I, I know that th there's a lot of anxiety there and, I, and it's not all from my experience within the church, it's from a lot of things. Um, and so, it really provided the occasion for me to say, you know what, I am going to go to therapy. I, I'm not just gonna talk about it. You know, we've talked about it a lot. Christy and I have talked about it a lot. Some of our closest friends, we've talked about it for years. And it almost felt like I was practically going to therapy. But that's also, but that, that's so but, no, wrong. That's so link. Yeah, you, you you have this, and I can't come. I was up with like, any I'm not opposed examples, to it. I just, but you have this tendency that I've noticed throughout our lives together that, like, sometimes it's like when somebody close to you kind of starts doing something or is interested in something, you're just like, yeah, yeah, I'm by proxy interested. <laughs> I'm, I'm by proxy, so I think you've been experiencing the benefits of therapy because the people you're closest with you have pick, been going. You, you pick up on a lot, <laughs> right? And it's not like we don't read and discuss a lot of the same books. But last night, ironically, the same time you were at therapy, I was at my first therapy appointment and I, I don't think without going through this process, I would I would have pulled the trigger on setting up that appointment. Um, you know, a, a, the, a first therapy appointment, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and give you a play by play, but uh, you know, it's, it's one hour is not a lot when you're trying to get it. When you're when you have as much as I have that you're trying to get out. So it's, but you know, I'm I'm very excited to have taken that step, and to me, it's a tangible step for me personally as a result of decide. You know, to to follow through on the commitment that I made to myself and just shared at the end of my story that was, I do want to work at understanding and loving myself more and expanding my capacity to love others more and also to pursue faith. To me those things are connected. If I can't I don't I don't think if I if I can't start to love myself more and I don't know if I can receive any love from God if 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 that love is to if they're there to be received, you know, so uh, I it's again I'm just getting started, but I'm very I'm excited. I know it's I know there's a lot of 
pain associated with therapy and that I also know that there that I have a lot of that there's this that there's this fear that is that's somewhere in me that then on the underside of that there's things that I've been afraid to explore um but my my hope and my excitement to 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 grow and to work at it is o- overrides the the fear that I think that maybe has always been there, and I think this process has helped me um, realize. So, um, and again to to hear like Holly's tweet that like she related to that it was just. Hearing, hearing that somebody related then kind of doubled back on itself and helped me understand myself even better, hearing it in somebody else's words. It's like, well, this is how I feel and this is the words that I would put it in of being exhausted. And, uh, it's like, wow, yeah, that's, that is me. So it's, it's, it's already come back. Um, and I just feel, I'm, I'm grateful that we've done it just for me personally. And I, you know, um, I I cannot own how other people process it for them. That's, that's on them. Well, you know, if we are gonna answer a question, I think, it, you know, you're kind of getting very close to it already. A question that I saw a number of times was why why tell this story? Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe even more specifically, there were people who were like, why tell this story? What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong and you're leading an untold number of people, depending on the popularity of this podcast, <laughs> uh, down the wrong path? Do you really want that? Do you really want that on your shoulders? You wanna be responsible for that. Um, I think that most of those comments are coming from people who haven't been listening to the podcast. And I don't just mean the episodes, I mean the podcast as a whole. Yeah. Because I think that anyone who's been on board for any length of time has sort of seen this coming because we have gotten increasingly personal. And, And so listen, some people are like, I would never do that. I would never talk about what is happening to me in therapy and have thousands of people listen to it. I, and listen, I get that, I respect that. Um, and I don't exactly know why this is the way that we've chosen to do what we're doing. And in some ways, um, this podcast has become therapy. It has become very therapeutic, right? Because we talk about, I talk to my therapist in the way that I talk to you guys on, on uh, here, right? It's just very much like, you kinda just start talking <laughs> and, and see what happens. And I don't know if there's just this increased desire for vulnerability and being able to just communicate that with a wide audience. I don't know what the motivations are and I don't know exactly how we got here. I just know that, like you said, the idea of continuing to kind of pull back the curtain and be like, this is this is just two guys trying to live life and figure it out. And if you wanna be in the you know, on the conversation, listen in on the conversation of two guys who've known each other forever, who are best friends, who work together, who are husbands and fathers, and now people who've deconstructed from their former Christian faith. If you wanna be along for the ride, then let's do it. Let's do it together. But it because it had gotten, that the tone had gotten so vulnerable and there was so much about disclosure, self-disclosure and because it was so related to our careers. Like we can't honestly talk about why we do what we do as, a, as an actual career without talking about how we got here and telling the full story. And we honestly can't tell the full story without putting our perspective on those years into perspective, which then requires us to tell our story personally. Right. Yeah, yeah. It all kind of fit together. But I think another answer is that we are 
discovering that when you are vulnerable, it opens you up to more love and more empathy for, again, for yourself and for your best friend and for other people. What I just described that like, I shared it from, I shared my story from me. Other people, it helped other people and then that response helped me. You know, it's just the, the way, people look at it like a show and yes, we, we have to set boundaries for ourselves and we have to be like the thing we talked about a few minutes ago about like whether it's on the date or like our version of being the preacher. But so yeah, we have to be, we have to be protected and we have to set boundaries and we have to, we're gonna be learn, we're gonna learn that as we go. But we're able to, and I'm grateful that we're able to have an honest conversation in front of a microphone that we would have if it wasn't here. Um, we've talked about how we have them a lot more because they're here than if the microphone's not here. But then we also, it, it's just, I, what I'm saying is we're conducting a, an honest friendship. It just happens to be recorded. And I'm just, what people do with it is, is their business, but I, we also experience a, a greater capacity for connection with and love with an audience because it's not just some, some people sitting in chairs listening, it's, it's individual people who are then contributing to a conversation. It's, it's not like we're going on television. It's a, it's a different thing, you know? And the nature of the conversation has been really refreshing. Can I, and I just wanna, I wanna read this one thing on, a, on the, the Discord channel of the Mythical Society, which is, if you don't know, that's our fan club, and yes, you gotta pay for it. I'm not promoting it, but I'm just saying that like I'm, um, I was just so encouraged by this one exchange, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but there was this 16 year old guy who was, he just, he was processing uh, our ear biscuits, and he was, and he just shared that, um, uh, he, he, he's, He's he's had a devout set set of beliefs, the specifics of which aren't pertinent, um, and that you know he was impacted by our conversation, and it, there was parts of it that kind of shook him up, and he was just sharing that, not with us, but just in the Discord, and then um, a response from one particular mythical beast. I just want to read part of it. Uh, well, I'll read the whole thing. I remember being there as a teenager, so I definitely know what you're going through. My best advice is just to trust yourself and to remember that there's nothing wrong with questioning and researching on your own and coming to your own conclusions. Remember that no matter what your religion teaches, there is nothing wrong with questioning or having doubts and that whatever conclusions you come to or choices that you make, make sure that you're making them for yourself and no one else. You may have people try to guilt you into making a certain decision or believing a certain way because they want you to believe the way they do. I know I definitely did, but ultimately, no one but you can decide what you believe. Um, and then the response was, yeah, that's, that's what I need to hold on to. And then there was some more there and it says, if you need support, I know there are a ton of people in this server who would be happy to talk or listen. And if there's anything in particular you're struggling with, we might be able to provide resources. Um, again, I really appreciate it was the response. And I, I, I think there are, there are a couple of things there. You know, it, it just seems like that's the message that I talk to my kids about, you know, it's, um, and it, it is such a, I mean, it is such a big deal to say, okay, you need to, 
you have to make these decisions for yourself. No one can make these decisions for you. They can, but y you really need to make these decisions for yourself. No matter what it is, you're gonna be loved and supported by this community, which is my second point that I was just blown away that that one example is repeated again and again that there's um, so many people in our community and then it gives me hope for humanity at large that there's that level of love and support for people that, it, you know, even if you're not talking about the specifics of, well, do I agree with you on this or are we on the same page or are you right or, or are you wrong, but it's love and support and uh, encouragement to, 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 to deal with those things in, in the most healthy way possible. The, these issues that are so important um, and I that, was just grateful for that. And that's why we don't, we don't want the conversation to devolve into an argument, right? Yeah. About the finer points of theology and, um, and again, it's not that I don't think, I just wanna be really clear, it's not that we don't think that you having your own answers as close to the truth as possible is is not important. As I hope I demonstrated in my story, it's like because those answers are important is why I don't believe like I used to believe, right? It isn't that those theological points and ex examining those things are not important. They're very important, but the moment that they become a source of contention between people and the moment that you take love out of your interaction you're missing the point, regardless of what side of the issue you're on. I, I think that just the idea, because what you're basically what you're talking about is that the most, and this is a cliche and corny, but the most important thing is love, right? It's like, what is my ethic, or what is, what are my ethics at this point? It's love. And I, and I actually think that asking that question in any given situation, what is the most loving response? What is the most loving way forward in this situation? Is a pretty good guide. Um, and incidentally, that's very consistent with what Jesus taught, <laughs> you know? Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I don't. I think that regardless of where you're at and where you come down on these particular issues and what you think about the nature of life and the nature of eternity, you're not going to go wrong if you kind of fall back on that. What would, what is the most loving thing that I could do in this situation? And like Link said, I think that it's been super encouraging that the vast majority of the conversation has been loving and respectful. We have an incredible community. We value that a lot and that's and that's the conversation, that loving conversation is what we want to continue to engender. And it's not about two guys who are, listen, we may have engineering degrees, but we're just, in, we, we, we're YouTube comedians. That's what we are. We're not authorities on any of these issues. If you're coming to either one of us to figure out what you think about your faith, there are much better sources. Um, <laughs> and so th that, was, that was not the intention at all in telling our stories was you to be convinced that we were right. It's just very much, hey, this is what our process was, this is what our story was. You should be doing your own investigation. Um, but all we, all, we, just wanna, we just wanna be about love. It's that simple. And on that note, can I recommend a children's book? Sure. I was reading this book to Lando. He pulled it off his shelf and this is my wreck in effect this week. It's called The Three Questions, written and illustrated by John, J-O-N, J. Muth, M-U-T-H. The Three Questions is based on a story by Leo Tolstoy. It's a short story that I had never read. And so as I was reading this children's book, to Lando, I was just moved. And it's 
it's very pertinent to the conversations that we've been having. And it was just like, it felt like a fate moment, <laughs> I'll be honest, that I was, I mean like Lando started looking at me weird because I was like tearing up and I was like, this book, this is amazing. There's there's something, there's, there's some wisdom in this. And I didn't realize that it was, and it was based on a Leo Tolstoy short story until we were done reading it. But like, I could sense that there was some depth to this thing. Um, so you know what? I'm not gonna tell you about it, but I recommend if you, you know, Lando's nine, he was very much into it. Uh, but you don't have to have kids to read it. I, I actually recommend this children's book adaptation instead of just listening to or on Audible or, or reading the Leo Tolstoy short story of the same name. Though I do recommend that story as well, but the way that it's turned, it's more modernized and it's a little bit more existential is um, it's it's very powerful. So that's my <laughs> that's my recommendation. Will you read it to me? A kid's Will book. you come over to my house and read it to me and tuck me in tonight? Gladly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hashtag ear biscuits. Let let's continue the conversation. And I'm not. It, it, listen, we will. We we're going to answer some questions at some at some point. So I don't want to. I don't want everybody to think we've just completely thrown all your questions aside. We've still got a bunch of them. We'll get back. We'll get back to them. We're just trying to send, zero in on the tone of how we're going to approach those. Thanks for listening. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 